Hi, this is Dr. Bhargava. Um, in this short video, I have a few interesting cases to uh, share with you all. Our first patient presented with a mass in the upper abdomen, and this was first evaluated with a CT scan, and we see that in the upper abdomen, there is this large mass in the region of the duodenum and the pancreas. This was uh, biopsied, and a neuroendocrine tumor was found. So the patient underwent a dorotate PET CT uh, for staging, and here are the images from the dorotate PET CT, the rotating image shows that there is intense uptake in the mass and the uh, rest of the scan shows that there is no evidence of metastatic disease and there is physiologic uptake in the pituitary, spleen, liver, adrenals and excretion from the kidneys into the urinary bladder. And so based on this, patient underwent a Whipple procedure and the neuroendocrine tumor was completely resected and it was found that it was arising from the head of the pancreas and was exophytic in nature. This is a good review article on the role of FDG PET CT in gastroenteropancreatic um, tumors. Our next patient was being evaluated for a lung nodule. They underwent a FDG PET CT study and here is their rotating image. The rotating image shows mild uptake in the left upper lobe lung nodule. The intensity of the uptake is less than the mediastinal blood pool. The SUV measured 1.8 and here's the appearance of the nodule on the CT showing mild uptake on the fused PET CT image and the diagnostic CT showed the nodule. It measured little more than a centimeter and the image on the top is in the lung windows. The image at the bottom is in the soft tissue windows. And this exercise of reviewing the nodule in the soft tissue windows is very important because it reveals the uh, pattern of calcification inside the nodule if there is any. And so based on this central dot-like calcification and mild uptake uh, of FDG with SUV measuring 1.8, um, it was diagnosed to be a benign uh, nodule. And so this is a good review article on FDG PET CT in the management of solitary pulmonary nodules. And on this slide, uh, we also have a diagram showing different kinds of benign calcifications in lung nodules, diffuse, central, lamellated, and popcorn calcifications. These, uh, this uh, diagram is from a website, um, radiologyassistant.nl. Our next uh, slide is showing dynamic images from a renal uh, scan using Technetium 99M MAG3. So we frequently use um, MAG3 renal scan, especially to evaluate patients with obstruction. We're looking for any focus of stasis. And uh, when we see something uh, which looks like stasis of urine, then we inject these patients with Lasix and acquire more images and um, evaluate them for obstruction. So this is the dynamic image showing initially the blood flow into the kidneys seen right there in the left um, and the right kidneys. And then the nephrographic image is one minute per frame in the posterior projection showing good excretion of the tracer from both kidneys into the urinary bladder. Sometimes Lasix is administered later uh, or, and sometimes Lasix is inbuilt in the protocol um, and every patient uh, gets a post-LASIK scan, uh, like it happened in our patient. And so these are the post-LASIK images showing that there is, um, after the administration of LASIK, both kidneys are forced to excrete um, the radiopharmaceutical um, into the urinary bladder. So this is a normal renal scan using Technetium 99M MAG3. This is a good article on pitfalls and limitations of radionuclide renal imaging in adults. Here is our last patient and they underwent a DEXA scan on the image of the spine. We see that they have extensive lumbar spine hardware and the technologist has tried to draw the region of interest and process this study, which is not advisable because with this amount of hardware, uh, we don't want to process the lumbar spine or report the numbers generated from that processing. So you can see here that the bone mineral density is very high and the T-scores are very high. And so when there is history of um, hardware, we exclude those vertebral bodies from analysis. 
Uh, this is a good review article on um, DEXA imaging. Thank you for watching.